Hi there, uh, welcome to the Alfred Wave Trader week ahead. Um, I'm just going to do a quick roundup of the S&P 500 for you um, from very big picture to small, just because I think it's a very interesting situation with the US-China trade spat and uh, combining it with the technical situation, um, you know, it's potentially uh, quite explosive um, what could happen um, in the short term, which could uh, make the rally in, in Australia uh, difficult to continue. So I just wanted to recap, you know, the big picture. Um, this is the quarterly uh, chart of the E-mini S&P 500. So that's the futures on the S&P 500. And the black diamonds there are just your um, cell pivots marked out. Um, and you know, I sort of keep an eye on those, especially in the big picture. And uh, all I want you to note um, is uh, that the sell pivot, once it's occurred, so once we get that quarterly close below the low of that highest price candle, um, that's that sense uh, of markets potentially turning down. Not necessarily, but when you go to the very big picture, uh, it's a difficult thing uh, for the market to do when it's trending. Um, and you can see back in 2000 and 2007, it was actually the precursor to, uh, well, two very large sell-offs over the next year or two. Now, in this huge rally um, from 2009, we have had a couple that have been reversed very quickly. Um, when this sell pivot occurred, basically, Two quarters later, we had a buy pivot. So that's actually a buy pivot there. And uh, once that buy pivot occurred, so when prices closed above the high of the lowest price in that current move, that's a buy pivot. And then we had the rally continue. And then we had another one here. There's your sell pivot and prices rallying back up into the guts of that candle and selling off again over the next couple of quarters. So there was an opportunity there. Uh, but then finding support and we've got a buy pivot there. So we market turned back up there. There's your buy pivot. And we've had another leg higher um, in this rally. Now, uh, the reason I want to point all of that out is that currently the most recent pivot is actually the quarterly sell pivot uh, from two quarters ago. So, you know, that is um, the main thing that I'm focusing on. And this rally that we've had, which has taken it all the way back to all time highs, and it's even had a little false break of it, but we haven't had a confirmation of a, a quarterly buy pivot yet. So until that happens, I can maintain a bearish footing on this market. And even if we have a similar move to what we saw um, on the last sell pivot, which was a rally all the way back to the highs, and then a sell off all the way back to the lows, that's a big sell off to retest the lows. I mean, that would involve a sell off going all the way back to those December lows um, around 2300, uh, which is 500 points lower than here. Um, you know, nearly nearly 20%. Uh, so even something as simple as that um, is, a, is a large move to the downside that can happen. And, you know, at, almost at a minimum, um, you, you can expect to see a move back to the midpoint. And this is the thing that I've been discussing with you about the point of control that the, the market f sets up these ranges uh, around a point of control and it ha does a lot of work uh, before finally deciding um, which way to go and uh, that gives you um, some good targets on the market so really that midpoint of the quarterly sell pivot is very important and that's around that 2650 region so as this market sells off after that false break and the news gets worse on US China, you're setting up the potential of at least a, uh, you know, a couple of hundred point um, sell off. And if we go into the shorter term charts, 
on the monthly charts, um, the most recent pivot is still a buy pivot. Um, so we still haven't had a monthly confirmation. But once we do, I mean, that means all of the charts will be pointing down. Uh, but going into the weekly, we have had the weekly sell pivot. And that's the thing I've been discussing with you over the last few weeks, saying that, you know, we've had this intensely strong rally. Um, and the interesting thing to note about this rally is that it's from the midpoint of the whole wave higher uh, since 2016. So uh, that midpoint came in around uh, 2370 or something, I think. So we've had that retest of the midpoint <clears throat> and then a rally all the way back um, to the highs, a little false break. Uh, so it's still early days in this sell-off and we've got the weekly trends as far as the moving averages go, um, still pointing up. Um, so I've got that 10 week exponential above the 20 week simple. And that's just a bit of a, a, a large uh, picture of the longer term trend, but I don't use them for entry or exit signals. Um, but interesting to note that prices have closed below the 10 week exponential. And that is often a precursor to a bigger move. Uh, we haven't cracked the 20 week simple yet. Um, so prices could find support here and turn back up. And that's if you get a weekly close back above that 10 week exponential, then you know, watch out. But the signs are here now um, that the weakness is around. And uh, we've had the, the weekly sell pivot. So you can see there a couple of weeks ago, prices closed below the low of that highest price candle in the move. And since then, sure enough, some selling has come out of the woodwork. And, uh, you know, prices are starting to look like they could be rolling over. Um, now, from here, it's not necessarily going to just plummet in a straight line. But I think this week is a bit of a risk. Um, but until we get the weekly close above the high of that sell pivot candle, or even, you know, a, now a weekly close above the high of that lowest price candle. So a weekly buy pivot from here would have me concerned. Um, so that would need to see a close above uh, 28.94 um, in the S&P, E-mini S&P futures. So if we do get a weekly close above 28.94 from here, we get a strong week this week and it closes up there. Well, I'll be, uh, you know, not um, remaining short or doing anything that with positions there uh, because prices possibly could be about to take off. Um, but until that happens, I'm looking at this as potentially continuing to the downside and any quick spike to the upside uh, should be looked at to be sold. Um, and you can move into the daily buy and sell pivots for that um, understanding of, of what the really short term uh, prices are doing. But it's just a very interesting setup now in that US market. There's a lot of boxes being ticked. Um, it's still got that strong upside momentum. So there's going to be still buyers around and we we'll still see some attempted rallies. But, um, you know, I have the lines in the sand now where the market needs to close above on a weekly basis before I'll change my view um, that I think we're about to see uh, a move to that 2650 level uh, at least in that E-mini S&P 500. All right, well, that's enough for now. Hopefully that uh, explains a few things for you. Cheers.